guys, Kevin from Epic Gardening here. I'm standing underneath the freeway in Boston, Massachusetts in the South End. Right behind me is a container farm. Actually, the guys from Fate Farms, Brad and John, I met in Berlin, Germany of all places, doing this crazy weird campaign for Timberland Boots called Nature Needs Heroes. That's neither here nor there. We got some cool photos out of it, cool experience, but Brad and John and Freight Farms are the OGs. They are the godfathers of the shipping container farm model. This is their new model called the Greenery. So what I thought I would do is hop behind the camera. We're gonna take you inside and show you exactly how this works. Super exciting and it's much more than greens. In fact, this particular farm is going to be growing calendulas, which are flowers, indoors, underneath the freeway, in the middle of an urban environment. So join me. I really hope you guys enjoy this tour. Okay, we are in the greenery. I'm here with Dave Harris. He's the head of client services at Freight Farms. What I'm gonna do actually now is hop behind the camera and Dave is going to explain everything that you see behind us, which is pretty epic if you ask me. We're gonna start over here with the controller system and the seedling system, which is really, really cool. Hey everybody, welcome to the greenery. We're gonna start with the beginning of the life cycle of the plant, which is the seedling. All of our plants in the freight farm and the greenery here uh, are started in these small peat moss plugs here. So we'll actually manually take a seed, insert it into each individual plug. Then we'll cover it with this humidity dome to keep the humidity high and encourage germination. Then we'll slide it into our seedling trough down here. This is a standard ebb and flow system. Fills and drains on a regular cycle. Uh, the way we have it currently set up is every six hours or so. After three weeks, in this seedling area, the seedlings have reached what we consider this mature seedling stage, so they're about yay tall. We'll then take them and manually transplant them into the towers, which are the mature growth area. So we're gonna do a quick breakdown of the seedling area lighting here. We use all LEDs in this farm. In the seedling area, we're using five to one ratio red to blue LEDs. Uh, they're about 240 watts per driver, and we use about eight drivers in this area that comes out to about somewhere between 100 and 200 micromoles at the canopy level. So that's plenty to keep the seedlings growing. We specifically choose the red and blue wavelengths because those are the wavelengths that plants absorb and photos use for photosynthesis most efficiently. A lot of the other wavelengths, such as green, they're actually reflecting back a large portion of that energy. So this allows us to really use the power that goes into this farm uh, the most efficiently. And as far as lighting schedule, do you have them on a 24-0 or a 16-8 or? Currently we have these on an 18-6, so that's 18 hours on, six hours off. However, the entire farm and the lighting schedules are customizable and we will change those depending on the crop. Got it. So let's talk a little bit about nutrition for these plants. All of the nutrition in the farm is, uh, so once again, this farm is a hydroponic farm only. We do not use soil. These plugs that you saw are actually made of peat moss and a medical grade binder. There is no soil in this farm. So in order to get nutrients to the plants, we actually will put them inside of these delivery tanks. We'll usually have a two part nutrient, an A, a B, and then a pH down, um, which is for helping to maintain pH levels where they need to be. We'll use these dosing panels to actually add nutrients directly to the tanks. We have eight peristaltic pumps here, four for the main tank, four for the seedling tank. This is the seedling tank here. It holds about 60 gallons of water or so. There is a pump that constantly forces water over these sensors. There's a sensor manifold up here. We've got a pH sensor, an EC for nutrients, and then a water temp sensor as well. All of these readings are being collected continuously so that the farm always knows whether the readings are within the parameters or outside of those parameters. If they are outside of the parameters, everything is automatically programmed to bring things back within those acceptable ranges. And that brings us to the controller. So this is a smart farm, meaning that everything is programmed and there is a brain that will actually automatically adjust the settings to bring everything within the ranges that we specify. So this is our touch screen here. This is kind of our manual interface where we actually can control things, turn things on and off. Uh, we can actually program timers. Uh, we can also have things respond to sensors if we want to. All of that uh, takes place sort of within the controller. However, it affects the behavior of all the equipment in the farm. So for example, if we need to add more nutrients, this pump will run, it will actually pull nutrients from this reservoir and dose them into the seedling tank, after which the water will run over the EC sensor until it has reached its correct parameter, and then we'll shut off until that, once again, that reading goes outside of those acceptable ranges. So I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to the main grow area here. We have three LED racks. 
the center one here is completely mobile. This allows us to customize the distance between the plant panels and the LEDs themselves. So at 18 inches, we are looking at about 200 to 250 PPFD at the surface of the panel. So PPFD stands for Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density, which is essentially the density of light particles that hit a measured area. All right, so let's touch on the plant panel. This is a proprietary Freight Farms design. I'm gonna take one down for you. Each plant panel has five individual growing channels. Normally there will be a cotton wicking strip that we'll actually put in here to help wick the water to the plants. All of the water that's delivered to these channels comes from these overhead irrigation emitters. Each channel has its own emitter. These are a fixed flow rate of two gallons per hour. Um, so we can customize watering schedule depending on how long we'll actually turn the pump on. So all of the nutrition, once again, is in the water itself. This is a standard hydroponic system in that sense. So if we walk a little bit towards the back, we'll actually see the main tank, which is where all of the water for the main grow area is housed. This is the main tank here. It holds about 120 gallons. We have uh, an array of solenoids here. We'll actually bring water into the farm from the outside spigot. We also have a drain spigot. We also have uh, active oxygenation through this air pump here, which is just to keep the water oxygenated to keep it from going stagnant. And then this, these two grates here are the intake and exhaust grates for the AC unit, which is mounted to the rear of the farm. It's about 36,000 BTUs, so it is very powerful and capable of handling all the heat that these LEDs produce. And the rest of the water, when it's top-down irrigated, is coming down into these channels, right? That's exactly right. So these gutters down here actually collect any of the water that runs out the bottoms of these channels. And it will actually route this water back to the main tank and run through these little sieves right here. This will catch any large debris, but it also allows the water to continue flowing. So you have a totally recirculating system here. That's correct. So we don't waste any water. And actually the one unit that we have that is currently uh, operational right now is in Florida. And the AC unit produces so much water, it is actually water positive. Oh wow, that's crazy. So it's we, pulling it out of the air. Exactly, we're pulling that moisture right out of the air. As the plants transpire, they actually produce a lot of that water. And we're pulling it out of the air and putting it right back into the tank. Wild. Yeah. One last thing to touch on here is the air circulation in the farm. We have two ducted vortex fans that are mounted to the exterior walls. These ducts were uh, specifically designed for this system. These holes are sized to help basically uh, keep the air distribution uniform across the entire width of the panel or the height of the panel so that some plants are not getting more air than others. So as you can see, they get larger as you go towards the top and smaller as you go towards the middle, which is where the um, CFFs are higher. And as you may have noticed, the center area does not have any airflow from those ducted vortex fans. So we installed this central, more powerful vortex fan to direct the air back towards the AC unit. So we've got a circular motion going on here, and that's to uh, try and keep the air distribution pretty uniform throughout the farm. One of the last and most important details about the farm is the CO2 enrichment. So we do use CO2 enrichment in this farm. We have a regulator that is connected to these two tubes right here. These tubes actually route back into the other side of those ducted fans, which will help distribute that CO2 throughout the farm and across the canopy of the plants. The last cool feature of this farm is that it's completely IoT connected, meaning that we are able to monitor and control the entire farm from an app or from any device that has an internet connection. So. Uh, we have a native iOS app. We also have this browser-based app. So we have photos. Uh, these are live camera feeds that we're able to watch. Uh, they take a photo every three minutes. We also have all of our sensor readings. And then individual controls for every piece of equipment in the farm. So all of these components here can be turned on and off remotely. We can also analyze all of our data simply by clicking on that piece of equipment and then specifying a time range. So this is really helpful if you want to diagnose if there's anything going on in the farm. Um, and then we can also program the entire farm remotely as well, all from this phone. Pretty epic tour. If you ask me, there's so much potential with this. I mean, it's crazy that we're standing in this technological dreamland under a freeway in Boston, and this farm will eventually be growing 
calendulas will actually be growing flowers, although there's many different things that you can grow, of course. So Dave, if, if someone's really interested in freight farms, maybe it's a potential career, just wants to know more about it, where do they go? So the best place to find us is on the web, www.freightfarms.com. You can also follow us on any social media platform. We have them all, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Uh, or you can also follow any of our 200 active farmers that are out there in the world who are growing and operating a businesses based around their freight farm as well. Cool. So you guys know it. Everything's going to be down in the video description. And until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.